Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a garden scene. This is another practice for me to paint a full scene and I'm going to begin by masking the sides of my paper. So here is the reference image that I used for this painting. It's a garden photograph by Saxon Holt. I really like the color of the flowers and also the movement of the pathway and the way the lemon tree arches. I feel like it gives a nice overall framing to the painting. Like usual, I'm going to make adjustments in order to fit my composition and take off some information here and there in order to try to not overwork my painting and add too much detail. So here I'm sketching very loosely, I'm just trying to divide up the page and giving rough spacing for the elements that I like to include in my composition. The first thing that I drew out is the lemon tree and I'm going to use that to measure the rest of the elements around it. Since the aspect ratio of my frame is different to the reference image, I'm just trying to fit the elements according to the space that I have and I want to include all the colorful elements like the potted plants, the flowers in front, the lemons and also the red flower on the side. On the right hand side, I'm going to add the pruned plants and also add more at the back even though they're all green, I want to use this as practice to separate them using different tones and textures. I left the background mostly empty since I'm going to use the wet on wet technique to paint a blurry background and I'm just going to make some things up along the way. Once I've placed down all the elements, I also drew out the lemons as ovals just for me to know where they're going to be placed so I can mask it here. This way it's much easier for me to paint the leaves surrounding the lemons without having to avoid those areas. For some of the lemons, I masked off the whole oval and for some, I only masked a tiny bit at the bottom since I want some leaves to cover the top. I'm also going to mask off the area of the flowers. This way when I paint the greenery surrounding them, it won't cover up those small areas. This way when I paint on the color of the flowers, it'll be brighter since it's not contaminated with the base color of the green. On the right hand side, I also decided to mask off certain areas which will act as the highlights for this glossy plant. I'm also going to mask off areas of the colorful flowers in the foreground. I'm just going to create star shapes or five petaled flower shapes for the daffodils, which are the yellow flowers on the left. I made the spacing quite close together around the edges, especially when it's closer to the pathway. And as it's getting closer to the foreground, I tried to make more space to create some perspective. For the bluish purple flowers next to the daffodils, I'm not really sure what these are. It's probably lupin, which are basically small flowers clustered together to create this cone shape as the silhouette. So here I'm just masking off some cone shapes with uneven edges. And just like the daffodils, I tried to make the spacing close together near the pathway and further and more scattered when it's closer to the foreground. I'm also going to mask off some stems and leaves. Next, I'm going to go through all the colors I'll be using. This is Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Hansa Yellow Light by Daniel Smith, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Sepia by Holbein, Sap Green by Holbein, Hooker's Green by Quatman, Ultramarine Finest by Schminke, Chinese White by Holbein, and I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm going to start by painting the blurry background, so here I'm just using clean water and trying to evenly dampen the surface. I'm only going to dampen the surface where I'm going to place the paint, this way the paint doesn't run elsewhere but it doesn't have to be so exact. For the color I'm going to mix up all four here, I started by creating a purple from Quinn Red and Ultramarine Finest, then I mute the color slightly using the yellow ochre and darken it using sepia. Using this mix, I'm going to start painting underneath the lemon tree and also in some areas where there might be space in between the tree. Then I'm going to continue this down using more quin red in the ratio and also some sap green here and there to suggest some greeneries or plants in the background. In 
in between the lemon tree here, I added some muted purple very lightly. This is just to remind myself to darken those areas when I'm painting the tree later on. After that, I'm going to continue down to the pathways. I started by dampening the surface. Then I used a mix of quin red and yellow ochre to create this muted orangey color as it's already mixed with the previous color that was already on my palette, which had the purple and bit of sepia. I'm going to use this muted orange color for the base color of the pathway. As I get closer to the foreground, I use a slightly thicker consistency and I also made sure to get in between the area of the flowers that I masked off earlier. Since I can't really see much of the detail of the background on this area, I'm just going to make things up by creating the same plant that's already on the foreground. To separate it, I started by dampening the surface, then I used some hooker screen as well as a mix of hooker screen with the purples and the reds that was already on my palette to create something a bit more muted and just letting the paint bloom out. Next, I'm going to paint the trimmed hedge. Here, I used a mix of sap green with Hansi Yellow Light to paint the top area. I like to also add some additional dots of sap green by itself to create an uneven surface. Then for the area in the middle, I like to use a dark green by using a mix of hooker screen, sap green, a bit of quin red, and sepia. As I get closer to the top part of the inner lining, I added more hooker screen in a slightly thicker consistency. This way there's a gradual gradient going from the dark earthy green to the cooler green. As you can see, I have two tones of green, the darker green being at the top of my palette and the lighter green at the bottom. I'm just going to mix between the two to get a tone that is somewhere in the middle and use this to paint the side of the hedge. Since the hedge in the foreground is very wet, I'm going to leave them to dry and move on to paint in the hedge behind. I'm going to use the same mixtures, but this time I'm going to paint the plant growing out of the hedge first using the dark earthy green. Then as I get closer to the hedge, that's where I start using more of the brownish green. After that, I continue on to paint the texture of the plant by using the same dark green in a light to medium consistency. I'm going to try to fill the background with a bench using the brown mix that I used earlier, which is from Quinn Red, Ultramarine Finest, and Sepia. And I'm just freehanding a shape of a bench here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine is just a suggestion of the shape. It might even be a bridge, who knows? But after that, I'm also going to add some greeneries to suggest plants surrounding that area. Whenever I'm painting the background though, I want to make sure I'm using a light to medium consistency and I'm going to paint it very loosely so there isn't too much detail to distract from the foreground. Behind the lemon tree on the side here, there's a bush so I'm just going to separate that area using a thin consistency of the yellow green from a mix of sap green and Hansi yellow light. And while the surface is still damp, I'm going to add in the different tones of green and I'm just going to let the color bloom out creating something that's a little bit more blurry. Next, I'm going to paint the lemon tree. I'm going to start by using a mix of Hansi yellow light with sap green to paint the lightest areas and I'm just going to really loosely paint it on. Then for the darker area, I'm going to use a mix of hooker screen with sepia and still painting it on loosely on those darker areas just to separate the value for those areas. Around the edges of the tree, I like to make the edges kind of uneven and pointy to suggest some leaf textures. Since there's a large area of the tree on the left hand side, I do want to vary the color and also use a darker value. So I like to play around with a different tone. So here after using the two tones of green, I also added some yellow ochre with sepia and hooker screen. However, on the left side, there are also parts of the lemon tree which is branching out. For this, I do want the leaves to be slightly lighter. I'm just going to paint that whole area green for now since the background is probably just more bushes but I do want to leave out a bit of negative space for the branch or the trunk of the tree. For the small bush of flowers in front of the lemon tree, I do want to separate that area so I added some quin red into the green mix. Next, I want to paint the purple plant on the terracotta pot. For this, I used a mix of quin red, ultramarine finest and a bit of sepia. 
and I'm just going to dot around creating different textures using the tip of my brush then using a slightly thicker consistency on the left hand side for a slightly darker value. While I wait for the base color of the leaves to dry, I'm going to use a mix of Quin Red with Yellow Ochre and a bit of Hansi Yellow to brighten the color of the pot. Then I use a slightly darker tone by adding the dark purple mix into the base color on the left hand side while the surface is still damp. I wasn't sure what to put for the background of the pot or whatever surrounding the pot so I just pick up whatever color I have on my palette but I do want some grass so I use the dark green mixture on the right hand side. Since that whole area is wet now I'm going to move on to paint in the plant on the right hand side. I'm using hooker's green as the main color again and I'm just going to paint on upside down V's basically and some curved lines to create the texture of this bushy plant. I left out a bit of area empty on the right hand side so I can follow it up using a darker value which is from Hooker's Green with Sepia in a slightly thicker consistency. I'm also going to add this darker green behind some of the lighter greens that I painted earlier to add more depth and detail to the plant. As you can see, I have an array of color on my palette that I've mixed already, so instead of mixing new colors, I'm just going to use the browns that I already have here to paint on the tree branch and tree trunk using a medium consistency. I like to also add additional ones freehand to make the tree look more delicate. To add texture to the bush at the back, I'm still painting it on very loosely, starting with a light yellow green from Sap Green and Hansi Yellow Light, and then picking up some of the darker green mixtures from the top of my palette to create the darker values and separate the bush at the back and parts of the lemon tree. I'm going to move on to another area while I wait for that to dry, and this time I'm going to paint on the leaves as well as the stems of the flowers in the foreground. I first added sap green to the light yellow green that I already had on my palette on the top left, then I follow it up with hooker's green and sepia. Moving on to the stems and the leaf for the daffodils, I'm going to separate this so I used a mix of sap green, hands yellow light, and hooker's green to create a bright cool green. Then for the darker value, I used hooker's green and sepia again and I'm placing this near the other flowers so there's a separation between the lighter and the darker values between those flower bushes. Now I'm going to go back to the purple plant. For this, I use the same mixture as before with Quin Red, Ultramarine Finest, and Sepia, this time in a thicker consistency. And as you can see, I'm filling in more of the plant compared to the reference image just to make this look more dense. As for the texture, I kind of made frilly outlines which comes together on the other end to suggest frilly textures of the leaf. And on the left hand side, I also covered more area using the darker value to suggest the form of the overall plant. Once I've made the frilly textures, I also added some lights directed to the center. Below the pot, I added some grassy texture using the dark green that I already had on my palette. Here I'm adding more hooker's green to the dark green and I'm going to paint on the texture of the flower bush behind the purple plant. Next I'm going to work on the lemon tree. I first use a mix of hooker's green with the purple that I already had on my palette and I'm painting this behind the tree trunk and the tree branches. This way I can separate the area of the background and the perimeter of the tree. Next I'm going to start painting the lighter area of the lemon tree. So I'm using the same mix as the base from Hansi Yellow Light with a little bit of sap green. Using the light green, I just paint on leaf textures in the area where I've allocated the lighter values. Then I'm going to follow this up by adding sap green into the mix for a slightly darker value and paint it around the lighter area. I'm going to slowly build the value, so I'm using a darker green now and I'm placing the darkest green on the left hand side of the tree. I wasn't actually sure what kind of texture I was going for. I was going between just uneven edges and also individual leaves, which I painted earlier for those lighter areas. I have to say that this is probably the area where I've struggled the most. 
with this painting and it's something that I need to figure out and practice in the future. So I'm open to suggestions if any of you have specific techniques when it comes to painting trees which are close enough for us to see individual leaves. But getting back to the painting here, I'm just going to take off the masking fluid so I can paint on those white areas. Once I finish taking off the masking fluid, I'm going to go back to the lemon tree. I want to redefine the leaf shapes, so here I'm using a mid-tone green and I also want to paint some leaves at the top part of some of those lemons. And I just find by covering parts of the lemon with the leaves, it sort of brings the elements together as they're interacting with each other. Here I'm outlining or drawing out some leaf shapes using the dark green mix and I'm painting around some of those leaves so the lighter leaves are left as negative shapes. I'm trying to not paint individual leaves so much but I still want some of the textures to show through. Around the edges or the perimeter of the tree, I did try to just paint on some leaf textures without outlining it, so those shapes are a bit more abstract and loose. I think at this point of this painting, I've already lost the area for the values which is very important to remember in order to not overcrowd the painting. Initially, I wanted the lighter greens to be on the right or the top part of the bench area but at this point I was just trying to work around it and darken the sides instead so at least the sides are darker in relation to the area of the tree on the right hand side. Here I was just trying to make sense of the tree and I'm using darker values to push certain areas back and also take off some extra detail and bring forward the lighter colors. Since I'm using a really dark value for the tree, I'm also going to bring this downwards to paint in the background behind the branches of the lemon tree. I feel like this area of the tree looks a bit too dense, so I'm taking off the dark color using a clean damp brush and I'm trying to lift some of the color while also creating the shape of the branch. Then once those areas are light enough, I'm just going to color it with the brown that I already had on my palette. Next I'm going to paint the lemons. I'm going to start out by using a medium consistency of Hansa Yellow Light and I'm just going to paint on the base color. Next I'm going to mix up an orange yellow from Hansa Yellow Medium with a tiny bit of Quin Red and I'm going to place this color on one side of the lemon I picked on the left side since there's more light coming from the right hand side. For some of the lemons which are more ripe or maybe in slight shadow, you can paint the whole lemon using this orange yellow. And I'm actually going to add another layer using a slightly darker orange by adding more Quin Red in the mix and this time I also want the color to be slightly muted so I also added a bit of yellow ochre. I'm going to treat this color as the shadow of the lemons to define certain edges if the lemons are touching in the composition and also to hide and pull back the position of the lemons by darkening it using this color. Next for the daffodils, I want the yellow to be very strong and bright so I'm just using Hansa Yellow Medium as is to paint the base color. While the surface is still slightly damp, I'm going to follow this up by adding the orangey mix that I used earlier for the lemons for the center of the daffodils. Here I added more Quin Red into the orange mixture and I'm going to use this color to paint the flowers at the back. For the lupins, I'm going to use a mix of Ultramarine Finest with a touch of Quin Red. I also mix this with a little bit of Chinese White to turn it into a pastel color. And I'm just going to wiggle my brush around in order to create the texture of the flowers. 
I forgot to paint some of the daffodils so I went ahead and painted more at the back and then I'm going to just paint on the individual base color of the lupins. Once I finish painting on the base color, I'm just going to let them dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back to the daffodils, which should be dry by now. And I'm going to use the orange mix from earlier, but with added quin red to make an even deeper orange and paint the center. Then once I'm done, I'm going to go back to the lupins to paint the darker value. For the colors, I basically use the same as the base color, but with less Chinese white in the ratio. And I'm just going to paint this and one side, especially around the bottom of the lupins. Once I'm done, I'm going to paint the white stamps using light green. I'm also going to add shadows using a dark green mix to paint in between the lighter lines to add depth to the flower bush. I'm also going to add the dark greens for the bush of the daffodils. Just like before, I'm going to leave out some lines with the base color, preferably attached to some of the daffodils. Once I'm done, I'm going to use the dark green to add some loose leaves behind the flowers. Once I'm done, I'm going to move back to the terracotta pot. I still have a reddish brown color here, which I'm going to use for the right side of the shadow. And I'm also going to use the purple brown color to paint the left side of the shadow right underneath the plant. Moving on to the greeneries on the right hand side, I'm just going to paint some of the white areas using hooker's green. Since those lighter areas still look a bit flat, I'm also going to go over it using a thick consistency of hooker screen for a darker value. And I'm just going to line parts of it to act as shadows, especially under some of the ones which are leaning forward. Next, I'm going to paint the detail off the hedge. For this, I'm going to use an earthy green. This is from a mix of sap green, quinciana, and a little bit of sepia. Just like any part of the painting, I like to play around with the ratio so I can create different tones of greens. And as I'm applying it, I like to alternate between those tones. I feel like there's a bit too much contrast for the top and the side of the hedge. So here, I decided to darken it slightly still using the same yellow green mix as the base color to slightly increase the value. I'm going to show a bit of soil right under the hedges and for this I used a mix of sepia and a little bit of quinciana. Next I'm going to paint the shadows on the pathway. For this I'm just going to pick up some browns that I already have on my palette or you can also create different tones of browns, doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to apply it horizontally while leaving out some negative space and this will act as the cast shadow from the lemon tree. I'm still using the brown that I have on my palette. This has a bit of quin red and ultramarine finest though, so the tone is slightly different. I'm using this to line the brick texture of the pathway by following the curvature of the pathway first in order to establish the perspective. Then I'm going to divide up the lines horizontally for the individual bricks. After painting on the textures and they're completely dry, I feel like I need to add on more cast shadow. So here I'm using a thin consistency of the browns on my palette and I'm just going to scatter them around following the perspective of the pathway. Then I'm going to use a slightly thicker consistency to line random parts of the pathways so the gap between the bricks look more uneven. I feel like adding more colors, so on the right I added more flowers using the periwinkle blue and on the left I'm just painting on dots on some of the bushes very loosely using a purple mix. I'm also going to add white flowers using a thick consistency of bleed proof white to add a bit of detail to the bush behind the lemon tree. Since the flowers are very small, I'm only going to add a few five petaled flowers. Then for the rest of the space, I'm just going to paint on really tiny dots. 
After painting on the flowers, I feel like the bush looks a bit too light, so I'm going to use hooker screen to paint behind some of those flowers. Then for the center of the white flowers, I'm going to use whatever brown I have on my palette. I'm basically done with all the elements, so here I'm just going to add final adjustments to redefine certain areas like the bench, the pathways, and the flower here. I added some white so I can paint on more red around those areas so the flower bush looks a little bit more lively. After that, I'm going to unmask the sides and look at the painting again to see if I need to balance out certain areas. I decided to fill in the rest of the space behind the pot with the grass texture, so I'm just using a dark green mix here. I'm also going to fix up some of the lemons to darken it with the mix of Hansi Yellow Medium, bit of Quin Red, and Yellow Ochre. Lastly, I'm also going to fix up the darker values of the tree. And that's it for this painting. Despite the mess I made on the lemon tree, I'm quite happy with the rest of the elements in the composition. If you guys enjoyed this video or find it somewhat useful, please consider subscribing. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!